hard can work online, especially working mothers, especially those who have young kids. So it gives you a lot of flexibility that way. And I've been very privileged to be working with them since April. I have recently been uh, promoted to a teacher manager as well. And it's just a great opportunity. Um, also, I've been in the education field for seven years now. I started my career with Beacon House as a kindergarten teacher. And then I moved on to the international school, which is an ID school. It uh, focuses on the international baccalaureate system. And that is where I got my international certification in the primary years program. I then moved on to teaching at Baby Academy. I have also taught at the IB school. And I will inshallah be continuing my journey at Civitas from January onwards. Obviously, I'm still a member of Dot and Line and will continue that as well. So I'm really happy to have you all here and I hope that it is a very interactive session, it's a very informative session for all of you. We're going to be talking about the growth mindset, how we develop that in young students, how we develop that in young kids, and how we can also develop that in adults. Because it's going forward, this is something that is going to be very, very important in the coming years. Um, it's a focus in the primary years program already. It's also a focus in many uh, corporate places because a lot of experts have said that the workplaces are full of, very frankly, very boring people at the moment. And they're saying that there is no creativity. And because there's no creativity, we're not succeeding the way that we're supposed to be succeeding. Right? So that's what we're going to be discussing. We're right on time. All right. Um, so there are a few things that we're going to be discussing when it comes to growth mindset. The first concept that we're going to be discussing is creativity. So I just want you to give maybe 10 seconds to this word. We all know what creativity is. We use this word. If um, we use the word creativity every day, right? creativity But if you focus on it for 10 seconds and you actually think, creativity, what do we actually mean by it? And how do we actually apply it in our everyday lives? Right? So I just want you to take 10 seconds and I want someone from the audience to tell me that when we say creativity, what do you think about it? When we say creativity, yes. Sorry? Thank That's a very good example. Different ideas from different people. Anything else? Anyone else? Yes. Thinking out of the box on something. Thinking out of the box. Perfect. Anyone else? Yes. Creative thinking. Give any topic to the child. To give any topic to the child. How do you think the child is going to be creative? Uh, he or she can share their ideas. They can share their ideas. Any yes. Uh, being creative for me is like uh, doing something that's, that we don't do in, in normal basis. Perfect. So you've given, yes, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. That is actually a very good example. Jitne bhi examples yaan pa hai, that is exactly what encompasses what a growth mindset is, right? Aap opportunities de rahe hai chote bachon ko to express the way that they want to express, right? I'll just give you one example. For example, the art class chari in, in a school. Generally, what happens is teachers in this setting we're going to be drawing the weather today. All right. Aaj sunny hai. Pehle se hi ko batate weather ke. No observation. The kids are not using their mind. They are not going outside to see if it's actually sunny or if the teacher is a hi hai. Nothing. All right. You just tell them that it's sunny. You will have to, you have the paper in front of you, you have your art supplies. We are going to be doing painting today. Paint sunny weather. Okay? That's what generally happens in art classes. That's what teachers say in a traditional classroom. That's what teachers do, right? Paint sunny weather. Ab wo bachche bichare, ek to vaisi aap ne unki creativity to maari di. Starting me. Because when they come into a classroom, they don't want to be told what they're supposed to be doing. It makes it very boring for them. Secondly, you're telling the kids, aap sirif paint use kar sakte hai, aur kuch nahi use kar sakte Again, you're limiting them, right? Thirdly, you're telling the kids that it's sunny, paint the sun yellow. If a child accidentally picks up purple, 
एंड ही सेज आज मैं पर्पल सन बना हुई लाइक पागल हो गया पर्पल सन देखा है कभी आज तक एंड द चाइल्ड इज लाइक सो स्केर्ड ऑल ऑफ अ सडन दैन ओ माई गॉड वॉट यू आई जस्ट डू एंड यू चैन दाइल्ड यू हैव टू मेक द सन येलो यू हैव यू एवर सीन अ पर्पल सन बिफोर and if god forbid the 4 year old or the 3 year old picks up a yellow crayon to make grass you like yellow grass your grass needs to be alive it has to be green you can't make it yellow what you essentially just did you squished the creativity you threw it out the window and that is not what teachers are supposed to do because for 20 years wohi bachcha jab office mein baitha hoga और उसका बॉस उसको बोलता है कि दिस इज योर टास्क एंड दिस इज वॉट यूर सपोज टू डू ही इज गोइंग टू से गिव मी स्पेसिफिक इंस्ट्रक्शन मुझे क्या करना है ए टू जी आप मुझे बताएं मैं वो करूंगा घर जाऊंगा आई टेक माई पे चेक दैट इट राइट नाउ यू टेल मी इफ वी हैव दीज पीपल इन द वर्क प्लेस डू यू थिंक दैट वी आर सक्सीडिंग एज अ नेशन If we have people who just go to work, they are they do exactly what they're told. A B C D. ये task आज की थी कर ली बस खत्म कर जाए. Is that company succeeding? चल तो हो रही है. It's working. It's making money. But is it succeeding? And that's the first step of growth mindset. You have to be creative. Let the child when you go in the class to develop a growth mindset. आप पहले जाके बच्चों को बाहर तो ले जाएं. आप उनको बोले लेट्स गो आउट फॉर अ वॉक और राइट टू लेव गो टेक अ वॉक लेट्स सी वॉट द वेदर इज लाइक वट डू यू फील डू यू फील द विंड डू यू फील द सन ऑन यू इज इट क्लाउडी डू यू फील कोल्ड डू यू फील हॉट मेक दैम यूज ऑल ऑफ देयर सेंसेज बिकॉज दिस इज द वन थिंग दैट वी हैव दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आर सेंसेज सेंस ऑफ टच सेंस ऑफ स्मेल सेंस ऑफ साइट लेट दैम यूज ऑल ऑफ दैम जब वो ये यूज करेंगे तब जाके तो क्रिएटिविटी जागेगी जब तक वो अपनी सारी सेंसेस यूज नहीं करेंगे हाउ विल दे डिवेलप दो सेंसेस वंस यू टेक देम आउटसाइड एंड यू टेल देम यूज ऑल योर सेंसेस स्मेल साइट साउंड एंड देन यू गोइंग टू टेक दम बैंक इन साइड एंड से ओके नाउ वे गोइंग टू ड्रॉ वट यू जस्ट ऑब्जर्व सो आपने जो बाहर देखा देर इज अ लिस्ट देर इज अ होल टेबल फुल ऑफ मटीरियल्स देर कैन बी पेपर प्लेट्स there can be pins there can be um paints there can be scraps of paper kuch bhi ho sakta hai things that you don't even have to prepare things that you already have lying in your classroom it's very easy to develop a growth mindset you don't have to go out of your cheeze jo aapke paas already hai paper pencils scraps of paper anything any tools koi plastic cup ho gaya koi paper plates ho gayi and then you tell them use this material draw the weather what do you think the weather is like today and then you see what these kids come up with i have been a kindergarten teacher for 7 years and i can tell you these kids surprise me every single day every single day they come up with such amazing things that i am like oh my god if this is the future of our country we're going to be one of the most successful countries in the world phir wo bachcha paper plate se agar sun bana raha hai वो जिस भी कलर का होगा ही विल नो दैट दैट्स द सन एंड व्हेन ही ब्रिंग्स दैट वर्क टू यू ही विल बी सो प्राउड ऑफ इट दैट यू विल सी दैट यू हैव फाइनली टॉट द चाइल्ड समथिंग यू हैव इट किल्ड हिज क्रिएटिविटी यू हैव इट स्क्वाश्ड हिज होप एंड ये ही टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी इयर्स फॉरवर्ड इज गोइंग टू बी द पर्सन हु कम्स टू द बॉस एंड सेज आई हैव अ न्यू आइडिया टूडे बिकॉज आई थॉट आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स एंड दैट इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू टेक आर कंपनीज फॉरवर्ड right so the first thing is creativity second thing is mistakes hum jab sunte hain galti karna what comes to our mind when we think of mistakes it's a scary word yes learning learning very good you already have a good mindset i can see very good yes learning from your mistakes anyone else what comes to your mind when we hear mistakes exactly exactly i'll just like to do yes That's true. Anyone else? Mistakes? Yes. Punishment. 
पनिशमेंट एग्जैक्टली सो हमारी जो जनरेशन थी जिसमें हम बड़े हुए आप रिपोर्ट कार्ड घर लाने से डरते थे If somebody you paid. used to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. The the night that you knew yeah. report card day tomorrow you could not sleep. Yes. Yes. That's true, right? I mean, all of us agree with that. That's that's how we grew up. Ninety five we aaya na. Amma bolli ki five kam hai. She is not going to see the ninety five. She is going to say where did the five marks go? Spelling mistake. Kya kiti dapa practice karai thi? they are not going to focus on the 95 and that's how we've grown up and again that's a problem because when you see the workplaces people in the workplaces they scared that they mistake and this is don't try anything new they like nahi nahi ek to khari alag hogi upar se phir fail honge to boss bigad jayega pay check kat jayega they scared so they're not going to make mistakes and where did this fear come from it came from our bachpan it came from our parents it came from our teachers teachers se kitna darte the if we did god forbid we did anything wrong we were scared that we would get punished we would have to stand murghi banna padega we would have to go out of the class we would have to hold our ears we would give up break time that was like the biggest biggest mistake that you could make that you make a mistake and the teacher say no game for you no break time for you Now, essentially, what that is doing is that it's making us less and less creative. And when you think about these kids and when they grow up, they are not going to be creative because they're so scared, right? So the second step of a growth mindset is that you should not be scared of making mistakes because एक दफा गलती करेंगे तो उससे सीखेंगे दोबारा वो गलती नहीं करेंगे. And what people in the growth mindset, what teachers who want to teach a growth mindset do instead is they celebrate mistakes. Because वो ये कहती हैं कि अगर आपने गलती करी इसका मतलब आपने कुछ नया try किया तो गलती हुई ना. जो आपने पहले नहीं किया था आपने वो try किया इसीलिए तो गलती हुई. इसका मतलब आपने कुछ नया सीखा. एक दफा आप गलत spelling लिखेंगे. दूसरी दफा तो आपको याद रहेगा ना वो उस time पे गलत था. Now I'm going to write it correctly. But if the teacher starts screaming and shouting at you and starts punishing you, your parents start punishing you. You're going to say, "Next time, I'm not even going to give the test." Forget it. There was actually a study that was conducted in, on university students. After the exams, उनसे पूछा कि जो fail हुए थे कि what will you do next? What will you do differently? अगली बार. Some of them said, "Cheat." because the repercussions of failing were so bad they said next time we going to cheat so that we pass some of them said hum us bande ko dhoondenge jiske hamare se kam marks hain because that's going to make us feel better about ourselves agar my 15% aaye na hum usko dhoondenge jiske 10% aaye so that's going to make us feel happy in the course we did i mean and most of them said we're not going to give the paper again we give up we're dumb we can't do it we're not going to give it again now once you say that i'm not going to do it again you give up all chances of succeeding right and that is one thing that we need to change mistakes ko celebrate kare usse dare nahi aapke ghar mein bhi agar chote bacche hain khuda na khasta koi plate toot jati hai koi baat nahi the plate will come again but that child's confidence is not going to come again if you start screaming and shouting on that child and say ye kya kiya tumne he will not ever dare to hold the plate and go back again give the kids the opportunities to make mistakes that's what you need to do unko bahane de mistakes banane ke taki wo seekhe jab tak aap bacche ko even if it's a 2 year old jab tak aap usko plate nahi denge ki this is your plate why don't you take it to the dining table बड़ा हो के कौन बनेगा वो शोहर जिसको प्लेट में खाना दे के बीवियाँ ला रही होती है ट्रे में डू यू वॉन्ट योर फ्यूचर हजबेंड्स टू बी लाइन दैट डू यू वॉन्ट योर फ्यूचर फादर्स टू बी लाइन दैट यू वॉन्ट इंडिपेंडेंट मैन यू वॉन्ट इंडिपेंडेंट वुमेन एंड दैट्स वॉट हैपनिंग एंड सैडली दैट इज वाई एक्सक्यूज मी दैट्स वाई मैरिज आर ऑल्सो इन ट्रबल इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट अगर ग्रोथ माइंड सेट आ जाए सब में आदि तो डोमेस्टिक प्रॉब्लम्स आपके खत्म हो जाए सास बहु के झगड़े खत्म हो जाए I mean, what's the most common problem? खाना बनाना नहीं आता है उसको. अच्छा, सीख लेगी. 
she's new in your house if she's going to make mistakes once she's going to put sugar instead of salt or salt instead of sugar next time she learn let her make her mistakes don't make her so scared to make those mistakes that she just resents living in your house right so first is creativity you let the kids be creative through their mistakes okay don't make them scared of making those mistakes now when you're making mistakes obviously the third thing that comes is that you're taking risks right mistakes kab hoti hain jab aap koi nayi cheez karte hain jab you go out of the box you take that risk right what i want to ask now is in the last 10 days how many of you have taken a risk just one two in the last 10 days how many of you have taken a risk it doesn't have to be a big risk choti si bhi ho you've tried something new to cook you've learned a new language you've tried to do something new it doesn't have to be something big okay now we have a few hands all right a little bit of relief okay but then again why just a few hands you know मतलब सोचने की बात है ना कि देर इज़ अ यंग क्राउड हियर देर पीपल हु आर स्टिल इन इन द एजुकेशन फील देर टीचर्स देर स्टूडेंट्स इफ ये दिस क्राउड डजेंट टेक रिस्क देन हु विल राइट एंड देन अगेन दिस इज द कंपनी फ्रॉम वर्क प्लेसेज दैट पीपल हु आर नॉट क्रिएटिव दे स्केर ऑफ मेकिंग मिस्टेक्स आर ऑब्वियसली नॉट गोइंग टू टेक रिस्क एंड वी नो नॉट गोइंग टू टेक रिस्क तो ग्रोथ कैसे आएगी राइट right? आपका वो ही करिकुलम इन स्कूल अगर चलता रहेगा चलता रहेगा वो बाबा आदम के ज़माने का करिकुलम वो ही वर्कशीट्स वो ही वर्कशीट्स वो ही बच्चों को पढ़ाते रहेंगे हाउ विल वी कम्पीट विद द किड्स दैट आर लेट से इन यूएस और लेट से इन कैनेडा दे आर ऑन अ कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट लेवल दे बिन डूइंग ग्रोथ माइंड सेट्स सिंस द डे दे वर बॉर्न हाउ विल आर किड्स कम्पीट विद दैन करना तो है ना we are in a world where borders are not important anymore right especially with covid let's take covid as an example before covid things were still very traditional school the kids were going to school we didn't know what zoom was we thought that was only a feature on our camera we didn't know what google meet was we didn't know what online learning was but when covid came everything changed overnight teachers had to learn how to use a computer teachers who had never used computers before in the classroom now suddenly had to excel at it because they had to teach agar covid nahi aata now today when you look at yourselves your experts at zoom if someone says take an online class you laptop khulega touch up ho jayegi appearance background aa jayega everything you're going to do it in like 2 seconds you're pros at it now if i ask you 2 years ago would you have been able to do that but the problem is that covid was not a choice it was something jo zabardasti hamare par aaya and it pushed us out of our comfort zone right it wasn't something that we chose to do but because covid happened all of us here know how to take an online class right right yeah. all of us as students as teachers anyone i was i was teaching kindergarten when covid happened and quite honestly half of the time mujhe ya sirf ye nazar aa raha tha this part or just this part or i could just see a fleeting image of a child running around teaching kindergarten online was hard but we did it because karna to tha na covid tha how would you teach now imagine ye to humko force karaya karne ko nahi karte to we would have been trouble imagine if you chose to do this every day if you chose to push yourself out of your comfort zone every day imagine where you would be i had a teacher with me in school she did not know how to use a computer kabhi use nahi kiya kabhi zarurat nahi padi and when covid hit that poor thing started having palpitations every morning every morning my phone would be ringing mere how do i turn my computer on there's a blue light instead of a red light How do I turn Zoom on? My kids can't hear me. She was on mute. My kids can't see me. The camera was off. How do I share screen? These were things that we did not know how to do. But now, when I look at her, she is such a pro at Zoom. 
and I tell her that. I was like, if you were not forced to do this, would you ever have learned computers on your own? She said, no. I would have thought it's too hard. And kya fayda? These are two alphas, and kya fayda? This is something that kills us in the very beginning. What we need to choose to do is push yourselves out. Push yourselves out of your comfort zone. Right? I'd like to do one activity with all of you right now. I want you to put your hands up as high as you can. Both the hands are just one. Okay. As high as you can. Alright, excellent. Everybody has their hands up as high as you can. Okay. <laughs> now what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands up a little higher. <laughs> awesome. You the creativity. You're, you're grasping what I'm talking about. Okay. When I asked the first time, you can all sit down, thank you. When I asked the first time, put your hands up as high as you can. What does that mean? It means to give you 100%. But then when I asked, make your hands a little bit higher, so why you forget it? That meant you didn't give you 100% in the first time. And that's human nature. We don't push ourselves out of our comfort zone in the first time until we push to do it, right? And that's what we need to do every day. Push yourselves every day. Aaj kuch naya Aaj kuch naya And when you do that, every day you're practicing to, to have a growth mindset. And when you do that, you will make your kids do that as well. You're going to be better teachers as well. You're going to be better parents as well. Because you're trying new things yourself. Uske baad kya hoga? You're not going to be scared of mistakes. You're going to be creative. You're going to take risks. Right? When we talk about creativity, kaise aap creativity? As a teacher, I'll tell you, I'll give you some examples. When you're teaching very young kids, they get bored very easily. Their attention span is barely five minutes. Especially kindergartners, right? They get bored very easily. Ab se khana to hai. They need to learn how to, how, they need to learn their phonics, they need to learn how to read, they need to learn how to write. One common mistake that the kids make these days is that they don't know what to do with the book and the book. Right? Interchange with them. When you say write book, they write duck. If you say what's this, it's a duck, but they'll say it's a book. They don't know. And it's hard. At that age, it's hard because they both look similar and kids tend to write mirror images. When you're trying to be creative, they become big things. How do you teach a child that this is bug, not duck? Right? So one way that I do that is that I, I, I attach characters to my letters. So I tell my kids, where is your belly? It's in the front. Right here with a belly button, it's in the front. So bug also has its belly in the front. Belly is not at the back. Is your belly at the back? No. The kids then remember this story, and when they're writing ba, if they're going to make like, no, no, my belly is in the front. You tell them when you're writing ba, you're like, well, point to your belly. Where is it? It's in the front. The ba has a belly in the front. And then when you're writing da, do you wear your diaper in the front? No, you wear your diaper at the back. So, da has a diaper at the back. The kids started learning, and I could see when I was telling them write ba, they were saying it inside the head, no, belly, 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 belly in the front. When you say duck, it's like duck, diaper at the back. You have to be creative. This generation that is coming up, I tell you, they will drive you crazy if you're not creative. So you have to do these things. And how will you do them? You will do them when you learn new things every day. You push yourself outside of your comfort zone. That's how you're going to do it. Creativity, risk, Mistakes, what comes next? Persistence, dedication. What do these words mean? What's persistence? What do we mean when we say you have to dedicate yourself? Is pe bas apne aap ko laga de. What does that mean? Never give up. Give you a hundred percent. Give you a hundred percent, which you did not do when I asked you to raise your hands. 
Dedication means that you have to try every day. You can't say that I'm going to try today and then I might I, I might take a break tomorrow. Dedication means you have to do it every single day without fail. Right? You have to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it every day. It's not that you started one thing. It was a mistake. Okay, it was a mistake. But the next day, leave it. Because again, what workplaces now are complaining about is projects that they have difficult to do. Start too. But as soon as a big challenge comes in the middle, they say, no, not possible. बहुत पैसा लगेगा, बहुत work workforce लगेगी, let's not. Let's find a simpler way, right? You never know कि अगर वो project करते हैं कितना successful होगा. नहीं पता चला, क्योंकि you left it in the middle. You didn't persevere, you didn't dedicate yourself to it. And that's what big CEOs are complaining that the workforce these days does not have that dedication to keep going. You burn out very quickly. And जो पूरी पिछली बातें हमने की हैं इसीलिए you burn out because आप क्या कर रहे हैं you're not using your mind. What happens in a growth mindset is जब आप कुछ नया करते हैं आपके दिमाग में neurons होते हैं something called a neuron, right? When you're using your mind again and again there are new neuron connections that are formed, which means that your brain is actually growing. In a person who has a fixed mindset, which is the opposite of a growth mindset, those neurons are not firing anymore. So when you look scan, dekhenge, someone who has a fixed mindset, that scan is going to be blank. Nothing's happening in the brain. There's no growth. And people now are asking for people who are coachable. This is one word that, you, you, that they're using. Sports teams, mein, in uh, schools as teachers, in organizations, as workers, they want people who are coachable. Coachable ka matlab, wo jisko aap sikha sake. Someone who is open to learning. Someone who is open to taking risks. And someone who will not give up. Right? So when you're coachable, they're not asking that 3.5 GPO. Excuse me. And itni is university se pade bhi ho. Ye ye degree ho, ye ye course ho. It's not asking. आप लोग में से जितने भी जॉब ऑफिस के लिए गए थे किसी ने इंटरव्यू ने आज तक पूछा आपकी जीपीए कितनी थी एनी एनी वन वेंट फॉर एन इंटरव्यू डिड एनी वन आस्क यू हाउ मच जीपीए यू हैड एनी वन एंड वी किल आर सेल्फ इन यूनिवर्सिटी जीपीए 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 ये लाना ये लाना ये लाना ये लाना फॉर व्हाट डिड एनी वन आस्क यू एंड व्हाट्स द अल्टीमेट रीजन दैट वी हैव अ डिग्री टू गेट इनटू अ गुड to get into a good workplace, right? That's why we have a degree. Did anybody ask you? What was your GPA? Why did you kill yourself for four years? All those nights where you were trying to cram all those books into your head, why did you waste your time? Nobody asked you what was your GPA. They will ask you, are you going to be ready to learn this thing? Are you going to be ready to make mistakes and learn from them? Are you going to be open to workshops? Are you going to be open to try new things? They want you to be coachable. They don't want you to have a 4.0 degree. That's not useful to them. And that's not going to be useful in the future also. So we have to teach our kids that the 95 aya hai, wo kisi kaam ka nahi hai, wo jo 5% jo nahi aya, that's what's going to take you into the future. Because aapke dimaag mein wohi rahega puri zindagi ki is ye maine galti kari thi, this next time I'm not going to do this mistake. You're not going to remember the answer that you gave right. You're going to remember the answers you gave wrong. So why do we teach our kids, our grandkids, our brothers, our sisters, padho, 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 GPA chilao, GPA chilao. No, 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 no. Not important. They need to learn how to have a growth mindset. They need to learn how to have this thing that is open to learning. Right? So don't say ke bhai, इसी तरह पढ़ना है, इसी लाइन में जाना है, इसी को रट्टे लगाने हैं, यही बुक है, नो, तो क्या मेरे 10 मिलियन डिफरेंट वेज़ पर यू टू लर्न, राइट? एंड क्वाइट ऑनेस्टली आस्क योरसेल्फ, व्हाट यूज़ फॉर आर डिग्रीज़ टू अस? यस, देर माइट बी सम थिंग्स जो यूज़फुल होंगी, बट एट द एंड ऑफ़ द डे 
That's where you learn, because that's where you're applying your knowledge. You're making mistakes. You're seeing that this is working, this is not working. Trial and error hota hai, tab aap ja ke, you know, you, you, you feel like, okay, this is working, this is not working. So your degree, yes, to an extent, it's important to get a job. But then after that, there's really no point of it. So why do you kill yourself? 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.9, 4.9, 4. not important. Work towards having an open mindset. Work, work towards being more creative. Right? And even as teachers, how many teachers do we have in the audience? Let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, most of you are teachers then. Any students? Students? Students and teachers. Okay, perfect. I'll give you an example. Michael Jordan, everybody who knows who Michael Jordan is, right? Michael Jordan was not selected as a basketball team in high school. He was told, you're not tall enough and you don't have the skill. Michael Jordan. Everybody knows who Michael Jordan is. Einstein, we all know this, Einstein was kicked out of school. You were dumb, out. Back then, if Einstein had said, I give up now, we would not be here as educators. Or if Michael Jordan had said, I give up now, he would not be where he is. Growth mindset, everything that we've talked about. They persevered, they dedicated themselves, they were not scared of risks, they made mistakes, they grew out of it. So you imagine if we normal people, not very rich, like Michael Jordan. Normal people, if we do this every day, we will also get there one day. And that's what we need to teach our kids. That the day you say, I cannot do this, is the day you fail. Then you can't do anything. But there are three letters that you want to force them to add at the end of that sentence. I can't do this yet. When you say yet, at the end of any sentence like that, what you do is you give them hope. You give them another day. Ki haan, nahi kar saka, aaj nahi kar saka. Mehnat karenge, kal ho jayega. Kal nahi hoga, parso ho jayega, ek saal baad ho jayega. You're not giving them a time limit. You're just saying you can't do this yet. You didn't reach your goal, yet. You were not able to achieve what you wanted to achieve, yet. When you just add ye teen loves, alphas, at the end of your sentence, you're making a world of a difference. And that just encompasses everything that we're teaching someone to be in a growth mindset. You go, you can't do this yet. We have to make sure that we are not raising a generation of now. Abhi chahiye. Agar success chahiye, abhi chahiye. If you want this, this is now. We are not doing that. If it is not yet, then it will not be done. It will be done in the future. Make it a generation of yet. Don't make a generation of now. Right? And we have to keep telling ourselves every day. If there is a young kid that comes to you who says, I can't write the alphabet. You are going to say, no. Don't say, I can't write it. Say, I can't write it yet. Because then that child will know that ultimately I will learn how to do it. I haven't failed. I just haven't done it yet. Right? So I want all of you to ingrain this in you. When you say, I am not able to do this. I am not able to do this. Yes. I was not able to achieve my goal. Yes. I am not in a place in my life where I want it to be. Yes. Doesn't that give you hope? That it is not the end of the road. There is still road ahead of us. We can still do this. And this is what we want our kids. I mean, imagine if my parents had told me this and if my teachers had told me this, it would have saved me so much pain, quite honestly. Because when I used to fail at something, I used to be miserable for days. And how many of us know that feeling? Kabi kuch nahi mila. We do go into that phase, right? Like, oh my God, when is this going to happen? I'm so dumb. If you just told yourself, there's still hope. It changes your entire narrative. 
right? It gives you so much hope that you have no idea what you're going to be creating when you tell your kids to do this. So celebrate your mistakes. Don't say that I was not able to do this. Say I was not able to do this yet. It's a very, very powerful word. And when you say yet, that is when you will have dedication. That is when you will have the perseverance to keep going. And you will not stop it. Right? And as teachers, as parents, hume, the most important thing that we need to do is, kaise bolenge bachon ko, ke abhi, you didn't do this yet. You need to give them more opportunities to learn. Right? So let's say, for example, I had also taught grade 4 at one point. Geography ka lesson tha. Geography was one of the worst subjects in my school. I did not like it. Because geography class mein kya hota tha? Itna bada sa word map aja tha tha and the teacher used to say, my the longitude and latitude of this country. And I was like, what in the world? What is the longitude and latitude? Or she used to say, okay, there was a worksheet next to it. And then you had to write, okay, where is North America? Is it in the south of the US or your north? I mean, it was just, it was so boring that I started hating geography. It's like, why do we need to even learn this? And when I went into my grade four class, I was like, this is not what I want to do with my kids. Because I will make them lifelong haters of geography if I do something this boring, right? It's not easy being a teacher, quite honestly, especially in this day and age, when you have a growth mindset, develop karna, you have to come up with creative ways of teaching. Because your kids, honestly, are kids of the future. We haven't even seen the future that they will be a part of. And we have to prepare them for that future, which we haven't seen. So designing activities on their level, ki hun, that keeps them engaged as well is very difficult. So what we came up with was mystery Skype. In an international school, what you have to do, one of the requirements is that you have to teach across borders, right? So if you're living in Pakistan, that doesn't mean that you only teach within Pakistan. You have to collaborate with other schools as well. <coughs> so what we did in mystery Skype was, I got into, a touch, I got into touch with another teacher who was living in Canada, another class. Right? And we decided that we we're going to have a Skype. Us for Skype tha, Zoom nahi tha, Google Meet nahi tha. This is pre-COVID. We had Skype. So we decided that we we're going to do Skype. My kids did not know ke wo log kahan rehte, kis mulk mein. Their kids did not know mere bache kahan hai, main kahan. Us teachers knew, right? And what happens in mystery Skype is, aapki ek video call hoti hai. The students are there on their side. My students are here on this side. I made groups. I had 31 students in my class. One group made questions. So you could only ask yes or no questions. Are you in the north? Is your country cold? Is your country the biggest size in terms of area? Just, just yes or no questions. So there was one group that made those questions. There was another group that was the face. So they were talking to those kids, right? There was another group that was the researchers. So when there was answer, aata tha, according to that, they used to research. So different groups, right? And in pockets, we obviously, we have our name of the, of the school, so we put tape on it, so that we don't give a clue of where we are. And we started that Skype call. Now they started asking questions. Do you live in a country that is cold? Do you live in a continent that is near Africa? Do you live in uh, the north of America? Yes. North America, okay. Researchers. North America, okay. Canada. Okay, Canada. Then they ask, are you in Canada? Yes. Okay, in Canada. Now you have to limit it down to the city. Are you in the province of Calgary? No. Are you north of Calgary? Yes. Okay, north of Calgary. Now the people, the other students, the researchers are looking in the map. What provinces are north of, uh, what cities are north of Calgary? Okay. Then you start asking them, are you the biggest city in terms of size? Are you the biggest city in terms of population? Yes. Okay. Which city is in Toronto? Finally, got it. Toronto. The kids will never forget Toronto in the rest of their lives. Because they did it like this. They were not able to guess where we were from. They said India. So once you guess, obviously the game ends. And they were closest to India. So they thought we were somewhere in Calcutta. But why make geography lessons boring when you can do something like this? 
right? And please feel free to use any examples that I'm giving right now because we're teachers, we share these examples. They're there on my Twitter as well if you want to follow. We did a lot of things. Another activity that we did was we were doing materials in class. That was one of our topics. Again, materials is something that I found very boring in science. With kindergartners, what I did was sink or float. So bring any material that you're interested in the class, whether it be a bottle cap, whether it be something you find on the floor. Let's take two tubs. Which one sinks? Which one floats? Two lessons in one. Right? You, you try to save as much time as you can as well as a teacher. So two lessons in one. You learn what floats. You learn about different materials. You learn what is heavy, what is light. Metals, plastics, everything. For older students, I ask them to get any everyday material from the class. It could be a pen, it could be a glue stick, it could be a stapler, anything. When you are at that age, grade four, very curious, right? And I told them, Tordu, take it apart. You have a pen, open it up. Nib hai, under ki filter hai, bahar ka point hai, spring hai, take it out. And then observe ke ek ek part kya job play karta hai in that hole, put it back together. Trust me, they enjoyed this so much. And my fourth grader could tell you what is inside a stapler, which even I don't know. And how a stapler works and how they put it back together. They learn about materials, right? They didn't destroy anything. They learn how to put it back together. And then they know that each part of a thing makes it a whole. So then what I turned it into was a lesson about equality and equity and how you work together as a community, right? Again, two lessons in one. That a piece was important. If the spring was not there anymore, the pen will not work. It's a very small part, but it's a very important part. And that's what, where you come in. But then again, there's a difference between equality and equity. And we that we need to be equal, we need to be equal, but that's not actually true. Because if we're equal, let's say all of you here are hurt somewhere. Someone's hurt on their head, someone's hurt on their finger, someone's hurt on their toe. And you come to me and I have the bandages. And one by one, this person comes to me and says, I'm hurt on my head, I put a bandage on the finger. Other person comes to me, pound me chot lagi, again I put a bandage on the finger. Another person comes, pack me chot lagi, I put a bandage on the finger. And then I tell them, I am treating you all equally. Is that going to make a difference to where you are hurt? So what's the point of such an equality? We do say that you have to treat everybody equally. What's the point? Aapko jo maa pe laga hi nahi hai, to maa par bandage laga ne ka kya faida ho? And this is where the growth mindset comes in and said, no, not equality, equity. So if a child in my class, when I'm doing phonics, does not know that the B is, like if I write B, the sound is B, if the child does not know that. And then in the same class, I have another child who's reading B at a bat. Are they both at the same level? Will it be fair, meaning class the phonics key, right? Because we do have a daily planner, we have a curriculum, we have everything. Class is phonics. Will it be fair that I'm phonics, but that child who has a bat comes in, what is he going to do? He will be bored to death in that class. And we don't want kids to be bored. We want them to use their minds. We want our classes to be such that all the children have a time for children. This is where equity comes in. My lesson will not change. My lesson is still phonics, right? But I will be teaching letters to the students who don't know their letters. And the ones who know how to read three letter words, I'm going to give them a book. And I'm going to say, give them a pack of stickers. And I'm going to say, read these, this book because they know how to read three letter words. And put a sticker everywhere you see the letter b. The class is learning the same thing. They're learning the letter B, right? My lesson plan has not changed. My topic has not changed. But now what has happened is I created an equity sort of situation for all the kids on their standards. So, we say that our curriculum is 
हमारा एक लेसन प्लान है फॉर ऑल द किड्स दैट्स नॉट हेल्पिंग दैम आपका एक प्लान हो सकता है एक टॉपिक हो सकता है बट यू हैव टू नो योर किड्स वेल इनफ टू से इस बच्चे को थोड़ा ज्यादा आता है आई एम गोइंग टू मीट हिम एट दैट लेवल आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू ड्रैग हिम डाउन बैक टू दिस लेवल उसको जब ब आता है मैं उसको क्यों दोबारा बक सिखाऊ and if a child knows how to write, read but actor why would i not meet him at that level why would i not now now not go to four letter words with him right so when you making your lesson plans inshallah as future teachers make sure that you know your students well enough taki jab aap lesson plans banaye to aisa nahi ho ki har bacche ko aap ek hi cheez dein right isiliye the schools now are moving towards more and more diverse classrooms what we do in differentiated learning is that har aapke class mein agar 24 bachche honge all 24 are going to be at a different level right so you need to first determine first year second year third year my first year is the ones that need the most help so their tasks are going to be below level the second tier are at grade level so their task is going to be different my higher achievers will need something that's more challenging there were three tasks in every class that i used to take because i knew i have to challenge my kids at their level and then i had special needs students in my class as well so i had to cater to them as well and this is where classrooms are going quite honestly i'm going to tell you in every class you will have one special needs student because awareness aa gayi hai ab students are being pro, uh, they are being diagnosed they are being put into normal school systems they are going to be more inclusive classrooms so teachers need to be prepared right so my advice to you would be please look up adhd look up autism look up the spectrum disorders because you will in the future have kids in your class that will have these problems and they're not problems there are solutions to it and they're very easy solutions but we will not be able to reach these solutions until you are trained so make yourself aware and how will you make yourself aware of this it's going to be self training i will not guarantee that every school is going to give you training on how to cater to special needs students but would it be fair if one comes into your class and you don't know how to deal with him or her right so this is something where we need to as teachers as parents need to prepare ourselves for i um when i was teaching at the international school i was a differentiation coordinator which i feel is one of the hardest jobs because i had to go in every class and determine if there's any students who was on the spectrum or who has special needs right especially in younger classes let's say grade 1 grade 2 that's when you start to diagnose these kids and there were always kids who were on the spectrum or who were special needs and then to have a meeting with the parents my degree is in psychology majored in child psychology so to have a meeting with the parents and to tell them that you need to get your child assessed is one of the hardest thing that you have to do and it's one of the hardest thing as a parent as well to listen to but it has to be done because once we know where the child stands that's how we're going to know how to cater to that child so it's a difficult thing but it has to be done so when you know the triggers and you know the red flags you will be able to do it too in your classrooms right and this is something that is very important going into the growth mindset even when you look at canada us europe scandinavia all these countries have inclusive classrooms now they don't have special classrooms for special needs kids and this is where the world is going there will not be you will have deaf kids in your class you will have mute kids in your class you will have autistic kids in your class you need to be prepared and that is where the teachers are going that is the future of teaching right so just very quickly i'm going to encapsulate everything that we've talked about first of all your creativity you have to make sure that you are creative in everything that you do secondly do not be afraid to make mistakes do not be afraid to take risks because that is how you're going to persevere that is how you're going to dedicate yourself to becoming successful and that's the last topic of growth mindset which is success and success comes when you look at all the previous points when you see how to develop the need of the child to become a growth mindset right and very quickly i'm just going to tell you a few traits of people with a fixed mindset so those who have a fixed mindset are first of all threatened by success of others 
So if you have a fixed mindset, you're going to be scared when other people are going to be the one who's going to get success. You're going to be threatened because you don't get it. But how do you get it? Now it will get out of it. And this is another mindset that a lot of workplaces are complaining about. That you don't get it in the future. Because creativity is not. Growth is not. Risk is not. You don't get it in the future. Hey, sit down and sit down. What work is it? Work, 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 work. That's what the person is doing. Let's do it. No, 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 no. Sit down and sit down. Let's go, let's go. This happens. In the cafeteria, we will sit for 2-2 hours for lunch break. What's the point? What's the point? If you don't want to go, at least let the other poor chap go. Our namaz break is also an issue. Namaz is so long ago. It doesn't take two hours. Namaz break is also. And when you say namaz break, nobody is going to say anything to you either. Because God forbid, this is religion that comes in there. Don't use these things as an excuse. If you are threatened of success, don't pull other people behind. And this is one trait that is very common Unfortunately, in our culture, we pull other people back instead of us going forward, right? And this is one thing that will come from within us, from us educators, from us students, as teachers, as mothers, as parents. We need to teach our kids that you need to be happy for someone else's success. You need to learn from them. Go and talk to them. Ask them, how did you reach here? They're not going to say, I'm not going to tell you. This is not kindergarten. They will give you tips that will help you move forward. So what's stopping you? Why don't we go to someone who knows that we are good at something? Let's say even in our workplace, we know someone who is good at something. How many of us will go and ask, can you please help me out? Please please understand this. How did you get so good marks? Please tell me. How did you do this? Can you please explain to me? Barely any of us will do that. That is one sign of a fixed mindset. You're threatened by the success of others. Secondly, you get defensive at criticism. So if someone's criticizing you, you If someone is giving you some constructive criticism, take it. It's going to help you if someone's saying that this is not going to be able to do it, it will be better. Take it. What will happen? You will be little ones. We need to change this mindset. If someone is saying something, listen to it. That's the second trait of someone with a fixed mindset. They don't take criticism. Thirdly, what they do is, they either believe that I am the smartest, I know everything. I don't need to learn. I already know. One is extreme. Okay, they say, I already know everything, I don't need to learn. The next extreme is, I'm dumb. I can't do this. Two extremes of people who have a fixed mindset. One, that I'm too smart. Unfortunately, many CEOs have this mindset. A lot of teachers had that mindset earlier as well. That I'm the smartest in the room, whatever I do is the word of God. Or they say, I'm so dumb, I can't do anything. Both are wrong. We are lifelong learners. There was someone here in the previous talk who just said, you're lifelong learners. Even if you perfect yourself at something, you're still learning. And that is one trait that people like Michael Jordan, people like Einstein, people like Steve Jobs, they have in common because they keep striving for something else. What's happening? Let's say Tesla, Elon Musk. He keeps coming up with new cars. Now he's coming up with a truck. God knows what he's going to come up with next. Car pe ruk jata. You made a self-driving car enough? No. You keep striving for more and more and more. That's the sign of a successful person. You don't stop. You don't say I'm dumb or you don't say I've learned everything enough. You keep learning, and especially in the field of teaching. Things are changing overnight. So you have to keep yourself abreast with that. Lastly, they give up. Which is another sign of a person with a fixed mindset. They give up very easily. And we talked about perseverance and dedication on the other side, people who have growth mindset. Right? Now, like I said, most of our domestic matters will be solved by our growth mindset. 
सास बहू के झगड़े खत्म हो जाएंगे सास सेस खाना नहीं पकाना आता येट And then the bow says, "You don't have a cook yet. You can get one. Your domestic problems will be solved. You have a growth mindset. Trust me. Because you're open to learning. You're not going to criticize someone. You're not going to say, 'Oh my God, why is this happening? I'm so dumb. I'm going to give up. I'm not going to do this anymore.' Your mindset is going to change." Right. So whenever you say that I can't do this, always put this three-letter word at the end. You can't do this yet. And please make sure you are the future. You are the ones that are raising the next generation. You are the ones that are going to be applying all of this. So please make sure that you're teaching your kids, your students, anyone, your colleagues. You didn't do it. You didn't do it yet. Make sure that you do not give up. Right. Do we have any questions? Any confusions? Anything that you want to add? No, all right, perfect. All right, so I think we're done for today. Um, I hope that it was something that was informative. I hope that you, even if you took up one thing, that is going to be a success for me. Um, again, I'm just going to very quickly talk about the workplace that I am at. It's called Dot and Nine. Um, Dot and Nine is an, a company that gives teachers the opportunities to work from home. So especially when COVID started, uh, what happened was that a lot of mothers were struggling. There were a lot of people who had lost their jobs as well. So this gave them the opportunity to make their own hours. So you can work for one hour a day, you can work for five hours a day. It gives you that flexibility. You can work for any subject. So if you're good at English, you're good at math, you're good at science, you can pick your subjects and you get paid by the hour, right? So it for me it was a very very big opportunity because. I was I was I've been in the teaching field for a very long time, but I was struggling at that time to manage my personal life as well as my professional life. And we as women, a lot of times, struggle with that, unfortunately, especially when we get married or when we have kids. And with dot and line, you have the flexibility to work in whatever hours that you're free. So please do look it up. It's a very good opportunity if you want to be a teacher partner, if you want to enroll your kids into the program. It's a very, very good opportunity. Thank you so much, all of you, all of you for being here. I hope that you apply everything that you've learned. We have a very interesting session coming up. After this, thank you. Thank you so much. You've been a great audience. Next time when someone asks you, we'll give you the best. They'll give the best that you can. Do it the first time. Don't wait for the second time. Thank you so much, Meher. Actually, now we have Salia from Dot and Line, and I hope Abhi, who you have with session, it was helpful for you people, and you have learned a lot of growth mindset and classroom management. So same as with Salia, she would come and do some activities with you. So you can attend the session, they can stay. Okay?